Hello everyone and welcome to this special edition of a Chief Pep video. Now most of you might know me from my series that I do when I build a cafe racer, but I had so much questions about wiring that I decided to make a special video for the wiring. And uh, why do I do this? Because a lot of fellow bike builders really get intimidated by uh, when they think of wiring or when they see stuff like for instance, uh, this, which they get out of their bikes and think, how the am I gonna put this back on my bike? Or when they see something that should help you uh, like this, which is a wiring diagram as it should be uh, when a bike comes out of the factory. Now, um, uh, I didn't learn this all by myself. Um, I did a lot of research as well just as most of you guys, but you find so much, so many videos uh, that explain you parts of uh, building something, or they use a lot of terms that you might not understand. And the nice thing is, um, when I started building my uh, XV750 Virago uh, a few years ago, and started uh, doing the wiring, I knew immediately that this could be done way easier. Uh, this is because I kind of have a small electrical background. I used to race RC cars and then uh, they were all electrical. So I've got a feeling with electricity, but the thing is um, when you're uh, building uh, a motorcycle, uh, the nice thing is that you only need a few parts. And that's when you get into, uh, when you know that you only need these few parts, then you know that the wiring can be done way easier than um, as you see it uh, in the instruction manual. Um, we call this a bare bone scheme. And this is especially uh, a lot of credits go to Dan of Farago Tech Forum because he really explains very well on the forum how you can make a, a really easy bare bone scheme. And then you go from that complex diagram to this very, very easy and simple diagram. And if you still Google on uh, wiring diagrams for motorcycles, a lot of cafe racer builders also make this uniform uh, explanation of this is basically the only thing that you need. And it all comes down to this. So basically what we need is obviously a battery, an ignition coil, and if you have two cylinders, two ignition coils, a starter relay or a solenoid, also called as a solenoid. This is your TCI, um, also kind of your yeah, board computer, I guess, or sometimes called CDI. And this is the same, but with wires, without wires. So don't make it more complex. This is just one part. And then it's getting interesting. This is a stator, whilst this part is your pickup coil. This is your pickup coil, this is your stator. These are two parts. And a lot of confusion often, a rotor comes over it. So the rotor turns around these, this fixed piece, which is the stator. And they both have wires. And a regulator rectifier. These are the only parts that you need to fire up your uh, bike. Okay, you could use an ignition key, of course, or an ignition kill switch but these are just easy, simple switches. This is basically the only thing that you need to fire up your bike. So if we hook these up together, then we are ready to go. And this is what I'm going to try to explain in two parts in a two parts video. First, I'm gonna explain how to test all these parts, if these are okay, and if they're still usable. And then the other part, I will start wiring these. And this will be a part of my uh, routine um, uh, bike building process because, um, yeah, as I told you, this is just a special edition. Okay, let's start with the first part. Typically, you would start with testing your ignition coil. I think most of you know what this is. This is your ignition coil, which makes sure that you have a spark on your spark plug. So this end goes in your cylinder. And it needs power, obviously. Um, now again, in another video, we'll, I will tell you where the power comes from. First, let, let's test this coil, because if something doesn't spark in your engine, you normally start with your diagnosis with your spark plugs, and you might uh, see that your spark is, that you don't have spark on your spark plug, so you test this thing. 
Now we have two, uh, si uh, two sides here. We have a primary side and a secondary side. Now what you need uh, for testing is a voltmeter. And you can buy these everywhere where you like, as long as it's got a ohm uh, resistance measurement um, tool, then uh, you're good to go. So I'm gonna put it on the ohms and I'm gonna see if this um, all functions well inside. And your manual uh, would have a, a diagram where you uh, have all your values that you need. Now this is a typical XV750 uh, ignition coil. Sometimes you find them in a the black and you don't have these two wires. You only have one lip here and the other part is the negative. Uh, this, these two should have some resistance. Uh, in other words, they are kind of connected to each other. If this is a open line, a lot of these meters tell you OL, which is an open line, then it would be that there is a break, uh, that we have a malfunction somewhere inside or there is a break in the cable. So let's test if we have resistance here. So I will put my red in here. It doesn't really matter where, as long as, because I'm measuring if it's an open line or not. And then I would see if everything is well, if I have resistance. I make, have to make sure that I press these in well. And there we go. Around 3.5 ohms, which is okay. This is just okay. We, around three or four ohms would be perfect. Okay, so this is a fun functioning uh, uh, coil for, for the primary side. Now let's test the secondary side because we have an entrance here and this is an exit here and this is where the spark should come from. Uh, so I'm gonna test if this, uh, if this resistance is okay. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my uh, one end uh, in the red wire and the other end in the spark plug cap and I should get a lot of resistance. Why? Because I have the spark cap still on and the spark cap gives a lot of resistance. If I take it off, the resistance will be lower. Let's have a look. I have to put this on a different uh, uh, size uh, because there are high values here and otherwise it doesn't measure. So I'm going to put one end here. And there we go. So I have around 35 kilo ohms. Uh, which is uh, high, but if I take the spark cap off, I am sure that I have values, so that's okay. So there's no uh, there's no broken cable or anything. You can take this off, and if I put it like this, then the resistance should be lower. Let's have a look. There you go. Only eight kilo ohms, which is perfect. Um, so. This thing is functioning. This is how you can test your ignition coil. Let's move to the second part. So now let's continue with the starter solenoid. So the starter solenoid is quite a simple uh, piece of uh, electricity that you have in your engine because the only thing that it really does, it, it opens up uh, power to your starter engine and it closes down. So basically it's kind of a switch, not more than that. So it switches on and it switches off when it, uh, uh, when it gets current. So um, uh, again, we have a primary side and a secondary side. Now these things are, uh, because it's just a switch, uh, not polarity sensitive. So it doesn't really, really matter where you put your plus or your minus, uh, because it basically the only thing it does, it doesn't really have a plus or a minus because it just, gives you, uh, if you would have a wire like this, then the wire would be closed, uh, a closed line like this, or an open line like this. So there's basically just a, uh, a plus uh, volt, which opens up or closes down. So uh, if it does this, then uh, your engine will start. And if it does this, then your engine doesn't get any power. Now, this is an important part for the XV Virago riders because they all have starter problems. And uh, I can imagine that this thing uh, really has a, uh, a tough job when it's in a Virago. Uh, they all kind of look the same. Uh, it doesn't really matter what kind of starter solenoid you see. This is the solenoid that we have, but um, it all looks the same. It's mo most of the times it's in this rubber hose and um, 
this is just a part and you can buy it easy. So um, this one looks uh, pretty horrible. I will do the uh, new wires on this because I don't know what's going on here. Uh, I have to open it up. But first, just let's have a look if it if even works, okay? So there are several ways that we can test it. Um, first of all, let's just uh, test if um, this has a, uh, a closed um, circuit. So I put my uh, voltmeter again on ohms. Now there will be not a lot of current, uh, uh, not a lot of resistance here because this is just not more than a wire. So this should be wired. So let's have a look what we can see. Now, this is normal. This is four ohms, which is a really low resistance, which is great. So I have a good circuit here. The wire is okay. Everything runs down here and comes back. So that's okay. So now let's have a look if it even works. Therefore, I need my 12 volt battery. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna power it up to have a look if it will pop up and down. Um, and um, it will give a click. You will hear a click and you can see it probably as well. And uh, if it clicks, then uh, that's, that, uh, that is okay. So normally you would uh, run uh, your uh, battery through here and then it, uh, with a starter switch between that, your starter uh, um, a button on your handlebar would press it and then it will uh, give you current here. So I'm not gonna simulate, I'm gonna, yeah, kind of simulating the starter button. So now you already know how to run this uh, via your, um, your uh, power cables. It needs to be connected to your starter motor. So I just put these two wires in here. Again, it's uh, not, uh, uh, not positive or negative sensitive. So you just press them in, it doesn't ma really matter where. Make sure that th there are no wires here touching each other because then you would um, uh, have a short circuit in your battery and you don't want that, especially not if you're using this 12 volt Evo battery as I do, which is pretty expensive. Now I would have to hear a click. Let's have a listen if it clicks. So that's okay. I have uh, something working there. Now, make, be careful because this doesn't say anything. Um, it's not sure that everything is okay inside. It clicks, but it does not more than that. Uh, I don't know if I have power here. If I would test uh, the power current now on, uh, on this, then I should have an open line because it's now not connected to my battery. Nothing happens. So I don't have an open line. What I want to know for sure is when I give a current to this solenoid, then I should, uh, this circuit should be closed. So I should get some resistance here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test here, plus I'm going to add it to the battery. Now I need my, uh, uh, my, my clamps here because otherwise uh, I have one hand short. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it current and then I'm going to test. Now, uh, I don't want to do this too long, but it can handle it a little bit. So, but I'm going to add it and then I'm immediately going to test if it works. There we go. So it got current now and now I want some resistance and there it is. So I'm okay with that. I have my resistance. So the starter solenoid is definitely okay. So that's how you test the starter solenoid. So now for the alternator or also called stator. Um, I took it apart um, from normally you find it in your housing of your engine. So what you're gonna find um, is two wires uh, in our case. In our XV, Yamaha XV750 Virago bikes we find two wires. Uh, a lot of times these are accompanied in one plug. Uh, in one and the same plug, but different wires in there. We have two wires. What you find is uh, the one from the stator has three white wires. These three white wires are all the same. They deliver the same power, the, sa the same current, and they all are exactly the same. Um, the blue one that you find here, in our case, this is for your um, for your uh, neutral switch position, okay? This is not a uh, blue wire which is coming from, and this is the second part, this is not a blue wire which is coming from your 
crank position sensor because the crank position sensor is the other plug, okay? And a lot of times, in a lot of different bikes, the blue wire is the crank position uh, sensor uh, wire, not in our case. So we have our own plug for our crank position, uh, crank position sensor, and that, that's the plug with the four wires here, okay? So this only tells you in which position your crank is, or makes sure that the spark is coming at the right moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this thing works. And how we're going to do that is do a static test. And let's dive to the bike and have a look at the bike where we perform the static test. So now I'm going to perform a static test on one, the uh, crank position sensor and two, the stator. So the one with three white wires would be your stator um, or your alternator and uh, the other one will be your crank position sensor. Um, now there isn't really a, uh, a really strong uh, test that you can, uh, can do. Basically the only thing that you could do is to make sure that these wires are okay and that there is a loop. So again we're gonna put our um, our, um, our uh, voltmeter, we're gonna put it in a, the ohms position and we're gonna put uh, two wires in, uh, in this case, the blue wire and the red wire. And if this is all correct, then we should get a reading. There is a reading. So this wire uh, is good. And uh, you can perform the same test with the other two in this Frirago example. Otherwise, you would always use the blue one accompanied by for instance, a yellow red wire or something. But these are all good. So uh, for our test uh, for the uh, crank position sensor, that's good. Now all we has, have left is the, um, the stator. Now the stator has uh, the three uh, white wires, sometimes yellow, it doesn't really matter. They all are the same color because they are all the same. We can perform two tests here. Uh, first of all, we want to make sure that there is no um, short circuit on our frame to check if your stator is good. Because if your stator is not good, then your, uh, uh, your bike will constantly show electrical problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test every wire. I'm going to put in my, um, there is no polarity here, uh, my one um, piece I'm going to put here. And the other one I'm going to put that on a solid piece of frame. And you should get not get any reading if you get even a zero or that you see a fake reading in your screen then it's not good this one is good as well and the last one is good as well now the last test that you can do is to make sure that there is a loop between the white wires so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, examine one and two, two and three, one and three, and so on and so on. So I'm just going to make sure that there is a loop between all these. And uh, the best is they all have the same reading as well. So you see here that there is little resistance. It's just good as it is and now I'm gonna do these two and in your service manual you also have your values so you could always check that as well but if they are all the same values more or less then you can assure rest assure yourself that it's okay so my stator and my crank position sensor are both good okay now let's go to the last and final part which is your regulator rectifier so, what is this regulator rectifier? Well, the name says it all. Um, the regulator rectifier rectifies the current that we get out of our stator, or also known as alternator. And the name already says it. This is alternating current. And it converts it to direct current, which we can use for our headlights, for our horns, and for everything that we typically have in our road bike. So we have a three-phase rectifier because we have a three-phase stator. This is typical for your road bike because you use a lot of current. And uh, you want to make sure that this converts the current to direct, uh, the alternating current to direct 
current or AC to DC. So what this has, it has diodes in it, three pieces, uh, six to be exact. And what a diode uh, does, a diode has a uh, mark here and it makes sure that you have current going only this way. So this will go that way. But when the current comes back, it will stop it. So it won't go this way, but it will go this way. We call this an anode. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure, I'm gonna put with my uh, voltmeter, put it in the ohms position. I'm gonna put a little bit of current in the re regulator rectifier. I'm gonna check if this current flows through and I'm gonna make sure that it stops it when it goes back so, I that, so that I know that my diodes are okay. This is basically the only test I can do with my regulator rectifier. So let's do that. So you might wonder why is this uh, cut, this red wire, I don't know, I found it like this on my bike, but it doesn't matter, I'll put uh, some plugs, uh, new plugs on there anyway. So I'm gonna, my, gonna put my black or my uh, negative on the positive lead and I'm gonna check if every of these um, wires stops or lets it through. So now I should get a reading. So this diode is working this way. This diode is working this way as well. And this is working as well. 0.5 ohms is perfect. See your manual for the, um, for the currents that should go through or the resistance. Now I'm gonna check the other way. So I'm, good, my, I'm gonna put my positive on my positive and I wanna make sure that this diode stop the current. No current, no current and no current. So that's okay. We call this a forward and backward bias test. Now we're gonna take the negative. So I'm gonna put the negative on the negative so it has to be stopped. So I don't want to see, want to see any reading, even if it will gives you a, a f single figure like a zero or whatever, then you know that the diode is not okay. But this one is completely okay. Now I'm gonna do it the other way. So I'm gonna put the positive on the negative lead and this is the forward bias, which is going well. So what I know is that this regulator rectifier probably will work. If you have any doubts, if your um, bike keeps draining batteries, um, there must be something wrong with your stator or your regulator rectifier. So, um, but I'm sure that this regulator rectifier does its job as it should be. Um, and um, but if it doesn't gives you uh, doesn't fill your battery, then still you would have to wonder if this regulator rectifier is right or your stator. Now I've showed you how to do those tests, so you should be able to test which one is broken or not. But this uh, regulator rectifier probably does its, does its job. So if this, helped, this video helped you to uh, make you a little bit better and a little bit more comfortable with your electronics, please give me a thumbs up as a confirmation that I, do, uh, that I gave you some help. There will be a part two about how to connect these wires. I'm not gonna connect them like this, but I'm gonna explain how to connect them. And in my regular series, which is my Chief Pep video series, there you will see me uh, building the wires on the bike. But uh, from part and two, one and two of this video is just um, explaining these things, how to test them and how to hook them up together. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.